Tonight, our guest is Barb, who has started a rather interesting tradition and one that is sweeping the various cruise fleets. Jess from the U.S. is now on vacation, so we have a brand new member of the team joining us tonight from the ships. We have our photo of the week and, of course, all the latest cruise news and more on our upcoming cruise trip and what we plan on bringing you. Shally was planning to be with us tonight, but she became a grandma this morning, so she is busy ordering a rocking chair and learning how to knit booties. Stay with us, share this stream with all of your friends, and type your cruise questions in chat because this is Cruise Week TV Live. Our show this week is brought to you by the folks at Good Memories Travel and by VMix. Welcome to the show. I am Matt, and if you are joining us for the first time, I want to welcome you to our community. Feel free to type your questions and comments, and we will try to pick them up later on. But a little bit about our show and myself. We are all newbie cruisers, and on the show, we bring on the experts to teach and educate us and answer your questions on tips, tricks, and how to save money on cruises so we all get to learn together. I still have only been on two cruises so far. Oddly, it seems that our producer, Bird, manages to snag more cruises than the rest of us combined. We'll be talking about his upcoming cruise a little later on. I also get to introduce a new member of the team, and he'll be bringing you some great videos weekly right here. We asked people in the CCPPF, Carnival Cruisers Passport and Producer Group, to send in their best cruise photo, and we got over 700 of them. We picked the best one to feature later on in the show. Now, like I said, it's all about the cruise community, so feel free to jump in and post your questions or comments on Facebook, Periscope, or YouTube as we monitor all three places, and we'll get to your questions during the show. But first, let's check out the cruise news. Multi-platinum recording artist Nick Jonas is the latest addition to the popular Carnival Live concert series. Nick will be performing on board the Carnival Victory and Carnival Liberty this fall while the ships are docked in Nassau next month. Carnival Live is a one-of-a-kind entertainment experience that brings the best in live music and comedy to the seas, providing guests an opportunity to enjoy captivating performances by top artists while already enjoying the whole cruise vacation. Performances are held in the ship's main lounge, which range in capacity from 900 to 1,300 people. However, there is a cost that the shows are not included in the standard fare. Rather, the tickets sell for $75 for general admission, and VIP tickets are available for $250, and include seating in the first few rows, a photo opportunity with the artist, and a commemorative concert pass. Carnival points out that at $75, the tickets are still way below what you would normally pay at a land-based venue. Nick says, this will be my first time performing on a cruise ship, which I'm really excited about because it's so different than any other venue. I'm looking forward to seeing and performing for my fans that will be there. Following a recent Supreme Court ruling allowing same-sex marriages in Bermuda, three Carnival Cruise Lines, Princess Cruises, p and Cruises, and Canard Line have re revealed that they are now taking bookings for same-sex marriages at sea. The ruling permits any Bermuda registered cruise ships offering weddings at sea packages the opportunity to offer same-sex ceremonies. All P&O cruise ships, with the exception of the Britannia, are registered in Bermuda, while Canard's three-ship fleet is also registered there. Ceremonies will be performed by the ship's captain or deputy captain with marriage license issued by Bermuda. The first same-sex ceremony is set to take place in the Caribbean on board the 3,096 passenger Azura in January 2018. Weddings at sea are very romantic, and getting married by the captain or deputy captain in the middle of the ocean is an unforgettable experience. Canard Senior Vice President Simon Panthrop said, This is a very welcome news for us, and I am delighted that we have become one of the first cruise lines to take a booking for a same-sex wedding. We look forward to welcoming this couple and many others, too. As a part of its ongoing investment in offering cruise lines for mobile, Carnival Cruise Line has extended its contract with the Alabama Port City. Previously, the contract was due to expire this December. The new agreement means Carnival Fantasy will sail from mobile through December 2018, so any of the early bookings will go ahead. We are very pleased to be continuing and further building upon our understanding partnership with mobile, said Carnival after the announcement. 
Carnival Fantasy offers four, five, six, and eight night Western Caribbean cruises, eight night Eastern Caribbean cruises, and 10 night Panama Canal cruises out of mobile year round. The Port of Mobile underwent a $4 million renovation fall of 2016. The ongoing commitment from Carnival is a boon for the city, which has lost cruises for five years after Carnival Elation departed in 2011. Why use a travel agent over just booking direct to the cruise line? Well, personal service for one and cash credit back is another. So whatever cruise you are planning to be on, give Good Memories Travel a call. You get the same great rates as booking yourself, plus you may get an onboard credit or a customer reward. Yes, they actually give you money to go cruise with. They enjoy planning and helping you with weddings and honeymoons. Good Memories Travel also specializes in handling every aspect of your group cruise, family getaway, or that family reunion you've been wanting to plan. Imagine letting someone else do all the work while you get to relax. Good Memories Travel handles all cruises for all cruise lines like Royal, Carnival, MSC, Norwegian, and more all over the world. They are your one-stop place for everything when planning your cruise. They are fully licensed by the CLIA, which stands for Cruise Lines International Association, and they have even been earmarked by Disney. Debbie Smith is part of the cruise planners, so give her a call to see what they can do to you. It doesn't cost you a thing to look them up and get your best right. Call Debbie for a free, no-obligation call on your next cruise. What have you got to lose? Debbie can be reached at 321 338 2953 and of course to their website at goodmemoriestravel.com and let's go. so we have our cruise week inner circle on facebook and this has a super extra special bonus for the upcoming cruise if you have supported our site through patreon by going to cruiseweek.tv support you will get access to our camera controls on the ship and you'll be able to move our new balcony camera around while we are on the ship next weekend for eight days you can go to cruiseweek.tv support and donate as little as five dollars a month in our patreon section and that helps keep our show coming to you each week enables us to produce these videos and interviews from the ships being an Inner Circle member, you'll get some of the super cool things, and we thank everyone for their support. It really means a lot to us that you like our show and support us in this way. So, who in our chat room has been snorkeling or diving on a cruise? Type yes in the comments if you have. Okay. Who has been lucky enough to dive or snorkel around a coral reef? One of the biggest attractions of Hawaii is the coral reef. It extends for more than 1,200 miles in the Central Pacific and accounts for more than 85% of all the coral reefs in the U.S. Even though they may appear to be nothing but rock, reefs are actually living. The living coral reefs give structure to the limestone. The limestone skeletons of the living coral, the hard skeleton remains of the dead coral, and the soft type of coral provide structure for the reef offering a habitat and food to the many fish and invertebrates, including lobsters, octopus, and crabs that live around it, and algae. More than 500 species live in Hawaii's coral reef alone. Not only provide fish with food, but also provide life-sustaining oxygen for all marine life. In fact, the ocean's algae provides more oxygen than all land plants worldwide combined. In addition to providing humans with food, reefs protect shorelines from erosion and storm damage by dissipating wave energy, and limiting impact of strong waves. Also, the sandy beaches enjoyed by the island residents and visitors alike only exist because of Hawaii's coral reef. Beach sand's main components are dead fragments of coral, shells, and calcified algae. But the reef is also responsible for creating the big Hawaiian waves. The shape of the reef is one factor in determining how big a wave gets. In addition to all of this, the reef provides diverse recreational opportunities such as snorkeling, diving, making Kauai a top tourist destination for people around the world, and generating about $800 million a year for Hawaii's marine tourism industry. So how many of you have been diving out to the coral reef? Let us know in the comments below if you have been and what you liked most about it. When you go on a cruise, you think about the pool, the drink, and if you're like me, you definitely think about the food. But recently, there are a growing number of people that have also started thinking about the cabin doors and how to decorate them. 
Barb has turned this into a passion and started showcasing the designs that people do on the Decorate Your Doors group. It seems that people are catching on and you can regularly see highly decorated doors all over the ship. To explain more about this, we invited Barb to the show. Before we talk to Barb, though, I want to see in the comments who has decorated their cabin door on a cruise. It doesn't have to be super elaborate, but who has added something? In the comments, post yes if you have. And while you're doing that, we will also say welcome to cruising.tv to Barb. Hey, Barb, how is it going? And my, that is quite a lot of flamingos you got going on there. Well, hi. Thanks for letting me join your show. Um, it's a nice sunny day here in Arizona. So I'm across the country from you. And we have a great time decorating our doors. So it's just a pleasure to be a part of the show tonight. Arizona, that must be pretty hot. It's been about 90, 95 here. What's the average temperature like in Arizona right now? Well, right now, right now we are running in the eight huh, 90s, I would say. We've already passed our 112 temperatures, and now we're in our monsoon season, which means it's, it's warm and rainy and very windy and dusty. So it's wonderful when we get our opportunities to go on a cruise and get away from the hot Arizona weather. That's intense. 112 degrees. That's, uh, that's pretty hot out there. So the nice ocean weather might be a little bit nice. So being in Arizona, what ports do you normally go to? Because there's not really a lot of ocean around you. So do you guys normally go to Galveston, Texas, Florida, the Northeast, or California? Well, we budget usually two times a year to go cruising. And on the average, we do go out of Florida most of the time. We've flown into Los Angeles, but one can only do the Mexican Riviera so often. Mm -hmm. We go into Galveston because we have friends. We cruise with friends. We cruise with group cruises. We go into Florida, depending upon where we want to go and what ship we're going on. This September, we will be fortunate enough to be going into San Juan and going into those islands that, that itinerary offers. So before I start asking questions about doors and how to decorate them, I got to <laughs> ask, there are quite a lot of flamingos behind you. So can you explain uh, about the flamingos a little bit? The flamingos sort of took off as a real fun little joke and a catchy uh, at mascot for our group. And you can see Clyde is behind me. And he is five foot tall, and we bring him on all of our cruises because when we have cruise events, people know where to find us, where to gather, and he's just a good icebreaker for conversations. So he took off, and people saw how fun he was, and now we just sort of do flamingos wherever we go. It's, he's our mascot. Uh, by the end of the time that we're on a cruise, this is pretty much what I look like. Uh, he's a little frazzled but he does his thing, uh, but it's fun to just have a good theme throughout the time that we go cruising, and people, even Facebook, say, hey, Barb, we found the Flamingo something. We know you would enjoy it, so he's a really good mascot to have. It definitely represents uh, the cruising experience in nice warm weather area, so uh, we'll, we'll talk about Clyde a little bit later on, I guess, but um, how did you first start getting into decorating your doors exactly? What was your first inspiration? I think you had a slide up there that had a little piece of notebook paper that we printed out. And the first time that we decided to do that was when we were with my father and we had to find our way back to our room. You know, the ships are large, there are many floors. We knew which way to go, but it helped give us a landmark to where we could look for where's our room and I produced one for my dad I produced one for ourselves and I think it was on one of your slides and then we decided after that well let's have some fun because I wanted to see the creativity that we could do and in addition it gets us excited for our cruises so when we book a cruise we plan at least a year out and it helps us just get pumped up to go on that cruise because then I'm planning, what am I going to do for mm -hmm. our door? Nice. 
I could definitely see how that can come in handy. When I get that drink card and I've had a couple drinks, maybe max out my drink card, it becomes a little bit difficult to read some of the numbers on the door. So seeing a big decorated door definitely indicates me, okay, I'm positive this is my room. I don't have to worry about trying to get into someone else's room. See how that comes in handy. So we're actually already getting questions on Facebook. Thomas Burke says, didn't Carnival want the doors toned down a year or two ago for safety? That's a true statement. There was a few cruises that some groups had that went, they went hog wild. Not only were the doors decorated, the rails were decorated, the walls were decorated. And Carnival saw this as a safety issue as far as people going down the hallways, having to hold on to handrails. The lighting proved to be a safety concern because people were lighting up their doors. And if there's an emergency, there are mm -hmm. emergency lights on the floor of the decks. And Carnival expressed their concern about people going towards our doors that had lights on them rather than following the emergency exits. So Carnival mm -hmm. asked all of their cruisers to kindly refrain from putting up lights on their doors decorating the walls and or handrails and to restrict their direct their decorations just to the, their cabin doors. Hmm. Are there any other regulations with that with like fire hazards or anything of that nature that we have to worry about or kind of plan on for decorating a doors for future purposes? Carnival has expressed that they would like to have fire retardant uh, materials used. Now there's a difference between resistant and retardant. And retardant just delays the flames. Resistant means it's not going to go up at all. Mm -hmm. However, they've asked for retardant materials, which are usually a vinyl or laminated plastics. PVC, for example, is a fire retardant material. So they've asked their cruisers to simply watch what they're using, don't go overboard, and to, mm -hmm. to do the best that they can. And that's all we ask of our members of our Decorate Your Doors groups, are to do the best that they can in keeping with Carnival's wishes. That seems pretty reasonable to me. I've been on only two ships myself. Bird's been on a lot more, so you could probably comment on it a bit more than I can. But the two ships I have been on, the Magic and the Triumph, I've seen quite a lot of people decorate their doors, and some of them have been very elaborate, very nice, and it's it's quite nice to actually see that. So how many doors do you think you've actually decorated throughout your cruising life? I've been on uh, several cruises, almost 20 cruises, and I did not start decorating until about three years ago, again, with that first cruise that I did for my father and myself. So maybe it was five years ago. So every time we do go on a cruise, we do decorate our door in some way. We also... Hmm assist others in decorating their doors. So we, I will make cruise groups decorations or someone will write me and say, would you please make us something? And I'll come up with something that they could use that's naturally inherent again to the fire retardant rules, mm -hmm. such as silicon flip-flops. They're no longer mm -hmm. rubber anymore. They're made out of silicon. So we had a, a, a BC cruise a couple years ago that we attended and we made a close group of friends all of those minion flip-flops I had about a whole hundred of them on my kitchen table for about four months while I was doing them and we secretly handed them out to people uh, I've made one for Shelly you can see hers that's up there in the slides and that was a surprise so oftentimes not only will I do my own door but I'll have fun on that same cruise and decorate for others and give them away as prizes also. That's really cool. And if one thing we know, we could actually see it in oh, that background. One day I am going to get this pointing thing right. It's just going to take me a, quite go. a while. I might need to get some like notifications to tell me, okay, use your left hand to point above here. I'll get there one day. Shelly absolutely loves Minion. She sent us this guy behind us, the cruise Minion. Anyway, so a couple more questions coming in. Brittany Goodwin asks, what do you use to stick decorations to the door? Because you can't use super glue or anything of that nature, because I'm assuming that would peel off the paint. Oh, absolutely not. And the first thing that I thought of before even Carnival picked up the rules, which they did adapt from our, our group, which made me felt, feel very flattered, is you treat your, car, your cabin like you would treat your home. So do you put scotch tape on your house walls and do you put 
duct tape on your walls? And no, I said to myself, that's not really smart. So we started using a 3M command product, which is the strips or the Velcro, because they come off cleanly. And we recommended them on our doors to use that in the carnival group. Other hmm. cruise lines doors are highly magnetic. So they can use magnets to adhere their decorations to their doors. The hmm. Disney Cruise Line, Princess Cruise Line, uh, Royal Caribbean all have highly magnetic doors, metal doors. And their recommended uh, method of decorating is to use magnets. Hmm. So the different cruise lines do have different uh, rules. But Carnival has adapted our, our guidelines and have said we recommend command products be used in addition to magnets. But magnets do not stick very well to the doors. Mm -hmm. They are very uh, weak and will slide down. So yeah. we always ask and advise our members, use the 3M products. Mm -hmm. Nice. I really like quite a lot of command hooks. I've just moved into a new place recently, and I have probably spent about $40 on just command hooks alone. Those are probably my best friend right now. So I definitely recommend maybe new people to try command hooks. But for new people in designing your doors, how would you rec like, what would advice would you give to someone who's never done this before? Because you've been doing this for quite a while now. I think the first thing that I would recommend is I hope that they would join one of our, our groups. We have carnivals rules that are posted so that people are familiar with it. But also our members have great advice on their past cruises and what helps with the doors. We do recommend a lot of times that people do purchase banners and they're usually um, 18 by 54 because that won't interfere with the door handles on your door. And as you can see by the ones behind me, those are a vinyl product. Uh, let's get the finger pointing the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so those are right? vinyl. And then, yes, it is. It's <laughs> backwards here. Good old Clyde. There we go. I'll use him as my landmark. But uh, we recommend the door banners for some items. But if you get very creative, there are products that you can use to just generally decorate them in uh in a scene that you like or an interest that you like and i also say get the kids involved because if the kids are happy and feel that they're part of this that helps them say oh wow i helped create that door mom and look it's we're taking pictures and it's going on facebook and mm -hmm. they're spreading the fun also so the key is is lamination and products that again have that vinyl uh, base base material so that things are not flammable. Hmm. I think that's a really smart idea to get into decorating doors, especially if you're a new cruiser. Uh, a suggestion I might be able to enact would be, if you are new to cruising, maybe if you have kids, you could incorporate, I don't know, certain symbols or words to be like, hey, look, my kids are new here. They're looking for friends or we're adults. We're looking for like drinking buddies or something like that. And maybe you could actually get some new acquaintance out, like, hey, we're looking for friends, just knock, or I'll be here at this time for new groups. That could be something for uh, future things to do and incorporate in some of your designs. Oftentimes, when people do join Facebook groups for their various cruises, they do have their own sponsored door decorating contest. And again, we have some great files in our group that can help people when they do sponsor a decorating uh, contest. And that's really a great way to meet new friends is through your Facebook groups. Use Facebook to your the advantage and grab and, and learn about your community that Facebook offers. Nice. So Melissa Colby asks on Facebook, can we decorate the inside of the cabin as well? Or do they decorate the inside? Or is it mainly just the door that you guys decorate? Most of the time, people will just tend to decorate the outside of their door because, it's, again, it takes time. You get on board, you're going to start decorating your, your door. Fa um, excuse me, Carnival does indeed offer packages that they will sell to you for about $35 that will involve inside door, inside room decorations. You can decorate the inside of your room, and the ceilings are magnetic. The key is, again, no lights, no candles, mm -hmm. something of the, that nature. They don't encourage, even when it comes Christmas time and Hanukkah time, 
no candles and no lights. Mm. But you can indeed do the inside of your, your room. And if you're on a cabin crawl, it's fun to share that decoration inside also. Cabin crawl sounds like a pretty fun idea for future cruises. I'll definitely have to suggest that to Bird for a cabin crawl, maybe like eggnog serving or something of that nature. Well, we can't bring out eggnog. Huh. I'll think about that. I'll definitely think about a cabin crawl in the future, though. That might be a pretty fun idea. Oh, gosh, we're getting blasted with tons and tons of questions. Oh, my goodness. Okay, Christy Mack, oh, she really wants to know, how do you feel about colored backgrounds on doors? Colored backgrounds on doors are fine. I think what they're referencing to is probably something that's within my group, which I asked as a courtesy to my members to please, if you've seen some of the postings that people are doing in Facebook, the first thing you see are those blasts of color all over your newsfeed. And I feel that they're fairly distracting. In our group, there's the, the posts speak for themselves. The doors speak for themselves. So I've asked out of courtesy that our members please refrain from using those colored backgrounds when they're using doing a post and that we've mm -hmm. reserved it for admin use so uh, that important gotcha. items need to be seen. So we've gotten a, quite a bit of dissatisfaction with that, with that uh, item, but it's mm -hmm. only out of courtesy that we ask for our members, allow their doors to be speak for their mm -hmm. posts. So, Betty Goodwin on Facebook asks, and this is a question that I was going to ask you as well. I've heard about people ripping down decorations on other cruisers' doors. Have you had this problem? And to me, I would imagine that kids would be a real issue. Kids and maybe drunken adults would be an issue with that. Well, you have to feel see that the carnival ships are a floating city. They have 4,000 people in their, on their ships. So you can tell that it's just like any other city. You have some good eggs, you have some bad eggs. And oftentimes when there's, there may be anybody, adults or children, anybody who will come and want to take down decorations just because they can. You're not in your cabin 24 hours, so therefore you can't see what's going on on your door. However, again, treat it like a floating city and decorate as you see appropriately. So with that, I would be really, really concerned about, you know, everyone kind of running around and decorating. Is there any safety precautions you can kind of put up to almost dissuade people from taking it down and maybe making it more secure? Do you have any advice for kind of making it more secure? Uh, I personally use lots of command strips on our door and to personalize your items. So if you have your name on something, or in the back of something, in the front of something that you're decorating. If Joe comes around, he's not going to want to nice. borrow a mm -hmm. decoration that says Jane on it. So I recommend personalizing anything that you put up on your door. That makes sense to me. I mean, if you have your cabin number or something on there, it's kind of difficult to take that because if, you know, cabin stewards or anyone else kind of sees that in another room, like, wait a minute. I'm pretty sure this was over here before. Are usually staff pretty good at finding things of that nature and returning that? Or what do staff normally think about the doors? Uh, oftentimes, the cabin stewards will help you out. If you ask them to keep their eye out for your decorations, they sometimes will. But again, it's not their, their job to do that. So they will add a courtesy keep their eye open in any other cabins mm -hmm. that they may see your decorations on. Um, but the, the, the fad or craze or fun of decorating your doors has just grown tremendously. We're very, very proud of our decorating door community. We were lucky enough to be one of 130 groups to be invited to the 2017 Facebook Summit in Chicago. It was a wonderful experience. And we have taken Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook mission, which is bring the world closer together. And we've incorporated that in all of our decorating groups. And we're bringing the world closer together one door at a time. Nice. That sounds pretty cool to me. I mean, what would you recommend for a cruiseweek.tv door design? I, I've been thinking about a couple different things and I'm not really sure what type of icons we should use? Do you have any recommendations for us? 
I usually, if you could see in one of the uh, backgrounds that you have in there, I've taken somebody's business card and I've incorporated it into the flip-flop design in which I have taken the flip-flops, incorporated their, their logo, the people's names, uh, banner, but mostly if it's a business or if it's something fun. Some people actually do a different banner for every cruise, but I like to take one and then I customize it for each cruise. So we could take your logo and I think I could probably come up with something pretty good. Nice. Well, definitely keep us informed of that because I would really like to do that for our next season coming up in October. That would be something really, really cool to do. And it'd be fun. Definitely something with cameras and technology because Bird is very uh, camera obsessed, as you can see. And upcoming on his future cruise, we'll be talking about that a little bit later on. He has a whole new camera system for that, guys. Anyway, uh, do you guys do group cruises? And can you kind of explain about what a group cruise is? Group cruises are a lot of fun. And norm usually you'll be in a com Facebook community in which has similar interests. And a group cruise will just be a group of people from that Facebook community having the desire to go on a big cruise together. The advantages of a group cruise is oftentimes you will receive onboard credit when you book through the group. And that's usually afforded to, to groups of 10 or more, five or more, whatever you work out with your travel agent. And the other advantage of group cruises is you're going to learn and, and make friends through your Facebook community. We have a group cruise we organized last a year and a half ago where we were on the dream. And uh, we had a bunch of strangers get together. We organized activities. And the key was to that was that we were able to raise over $600 for the St. Jude organization oh, wow. uh, charity that we donated while we were on board. And this is great. We have another group cruise planned for July of 2018 out of Galveston on the Breeze, which will be a Decorate Your Doors, very family-friendly group cruise. So oftentimes activities include the meet and greet, in which you will exchange gifts, have raffles. The adults will have a slot tournament, maybe a cabin crawl where you will visit various cabin types that people have opened up to allow others to see what other cabins look like. We also have, oh, what else? We will also have activities that we have groups for, for off the ship that may be tours together in which when you have a large group, you can obtain a good discount for the people that are going. Interesting. So we're going to be wrapping up this interview very shortly. Do you have any final bits of advice for new people to decorate your doors or maybe future advice for us and our future group cruise? Because we are going to be doing a group cruise in the future. And I've never really done one before. I mean, people kind of knew who we were because we posted here and there before. But uh, what advice could you give us for that? I'd say the first key is to have fun. Look at your itinerary. Decide if you want to make that commitment and do something for your doors because you enjoy it. The group that you're seeing, the uh, uh, dec uh, decorateyourdoors.com, is our page on Facebook, which also has links to all of the cruise line decorating groups. And I'd say do the judgment call. If you want to have a good time, we have a good time. We also have creativecrafters.com on Facebook which you can create fun things, lanyards, flip-flops, things mm -hmm. that you want for your cruise. So we have to open up your creativity and let those juices flow. And it's just have fun. And that's what our key was. When we were at that Facebook summit, everyone knew that we were there because we have a good time with Facebook. And we mm -hmm. use it to our advantage to enjoy ourselves and being with others and grow your community of friends. Nice. So we'll definitely have to come up with some little things to give away to new people. We only had, uh, oh gosh, what are they called? Business cards last time, but we might come up with lanyards or some other little giveaways for people that kind of know us and recognize us. We had a surprising amount of people recognize us right off the bat on my first cruise, and that took me off guard. So I'm a bit more prepared for this one. But uh, thank you, Barb, so much for coming to the show. We really appreciate it a lot. Thank you very much. And if anybody has any questions or wants to join our group or just in general about decorating or crafting, please join in our groups. You're more than welcome. And we will enjoy seeing what everyone's creativity comes up with.
this show and all the wonderful abilities that we have to bring in guests remotely wouldn't be possible at the level we do without vmix vmix is a live production software that powers our live show and many many other high-end productions from church services to football games more and more live productions run on vmix what our producer bird really liked when he was trying to improve our show was that they give you a full 60-day trial of everything that way you can test it out risk-free before you buy for two full months then they have systems starting from just $350. If you're going to do any sort of serious live streaming, you need vmix. Try it at vmix.com today. So we're going to do our group cruise in 2019 on the Carnival Horizon. This is being put on by our good friends at Good Memories Travel, and we would love to get our community on there with us. It is February 23rd, 2019. Again, February 23rd of 2019. And we hope to have our entire team on board and having a blast with all of you as well, enjoying one of Carnival's biggest and newest ships. The entry for the $500 drawing has also been extended, so you can be entered into that when you book. There is a web page for the cruise, and that is cruiseweek.tv slash group cruise. Cruiseweek.tv slash group cruise. Let us know what you would like to see on the group cruise since we have never done one before. Post a drunken high heel race down the promenade on the horizon. The promenade will be even longer than any of the other ships. Who do you think will win, myself or Shally? Post in the comments below. So, I told you we have a new member of the team joining us this week, because Jess from the U.S. is now on vacation. We are happy to have Lucas Bond join us. Now, Lucas is a ship's comedian, and I don't just mean he's a funny member of the ship's crew. That he's, his job is not only showing you life below deck, but also life through the eyes of someone who gets to bounce around from ship to ship and cruise line to cruise line. Each week, he'll be bringing us a new video and even be live with us on some shows when the internet permits. Well, we'll let int Lucas introduce himself. Hey, Cruise Week TV. My name is comedian Lucas Bone. I just wanted to take this quick opportunity to introduce myself. I tour over 35 weeks a year, every year, telling jokes on cruise lines like Carnival, Royal Caribbean, and Norwegian. My video blog is called Life Below Deck because normally we stay in the crew areas. I've teamed up with the awesome people at Cruise Week TV and every single week I'll send them a new video blog. Whether you have a specific cruise company that you like the best or you just love cruising, make sure you tune in every single week for a brand new video. Make sure you subscribe to Cruise Week TV and also follow me on all social media like Facebook and Twitter. You can go to my website which you'll see next to see my full cruise schedule. See you then. Hey everyone, my name is Casey. I'm from Naples, Florida. I've been dancing since I was the age of two, and I grew up training in a dance studio while also attending dance competitions and conventions with some of the most world-renowned choreographers in the United States and in the world. Um, from there, I did go to college for dance performance and education. I went to Towson University in Baltimore, Maryland, and there I got a BFA. From After that, I went to many, many auditions and tried to gain more experience with exposing myself to different companies, whether it was cruise lines or dance companies in New York and LA. And I was offered a contract with Royal Caribbean in 2014. The audition process takes you through three steps. You have to do technique. From there, you'll learn choreography, and there'll be another cut. And then you get filmed with about one or two other people in the video with you as a performance reel that they can look back on. And hopefully, either you stay to the end and you're given a contract, or you may stay to the end and then not hear from them. In my experience, I auditioned and didn't hear from Royal from Royal until about eight months later and so I had to find another job because I couldn't just wait around and not get paid so um, eight months later luckily I got a my first ship was Majesty of the Seas in 2014 and from there I've done one other ship and then two replacement contracts and now I'm in a contract as dance captain in a different position where you 
are in charge of the cast and you're in charge of keeping the integrity of the shows through injuries and replacements or in any circumstance. Awesome. Thank you so much, Casey. And like I said, stay tuned, guys. Lots more interviews and lots more behind the scene footage with me, comedian Lucas Bone. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Casey. Thanks, Good night. Guys. Kids nowadays have smart boards. A smart board is like a huge iPad. It comes standard with 38,000 educational videos. 38,000. Okay? Stop. Let me take you back. Do you remember our TV experience when we were young? <laughs> they roll in that one rickety AV card with the big TV duct tape to the top. And everyone would get that warm, fuzzy feeling in their gut. We'd be like, ah! every damn subject, I'll prove it, finish the song, Conjunction Junction. Look at all the young girls, they're like, what is that? What is that? Is that like a cult? I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid, you can't make me. I hope you will all welcome Lucas to the team, and please join him on his Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash comic Lucas Bond. And let him know in either the comments or on his page what you want to see from Life Below Deck. And he said he will try his best to show you. Next week, our guest is the Carnival Dreams cruise director, Chris Williams, better known to cruisers as the Flying Scotsman. Chris will be with us next week as we do our own repositioning by having two weeks of Carnival-related shows that the week after we can talk about all of Royal Caribbean as Bird will be on the Oasis. Chris is the main cruise director on the Carnival Dream, and we look forward to having him answer all of your questions and give you his personal tips for cruising on ships. If you guys want to follow us, don't forget, guys, our picture of the week. We have over 700 people comment their picture from the Carnival Cruisers past, present, and future group. And this week, we have Jim Doyle and his family in his formal attire on his birthday cruise. So again, guys, if you want to be featured on the show, make sure you comment your best picture of it. And if we choose your group, make sure you guys check those groups because you never know, and I never know what group we're going to choose till pretty much a couple days before. If you want to follow us on our Oasis cruise, we have a calendar posted showing what times and where we will be live streaming from the ship. If you go to cruiseweek.tv slash watch live, you will be able to scroll down and see the calendar of events each day and following Bird's amazing cruise trip. I also want to thank Cruising Cat from the RC Periscopers group for helping us out over in our Periscope shot room. If you want to see a lot of live streams from people on ships, head on over to RC's Periscopers group on Facebook for a list. And if you know someone who will enjoy watching the show as much as you do, be nice, share the link to their Facebook page so they'll also can enjoy it. Please like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Just doing that alone really helps our show out tremendously, as well as our sponsors. And it helps us keep our show alive each week. This brings another episode of Cruise Week TV to an end. And if you guys have liked today's show, or even if you're watching the replay, hit that like button or the thumbs up button. Of course, if you didn't like it, you're more than free to heal that dick's like button as well. But it hurts my feelings personally to do that. If you really like the show, please go over to youtube.com slash cruiseweek and hit that subscribe button. Just subscribing and turning on really helps us out and lets the sponsors know that you're enjoying the show as well as making us eligible for future giveaways that you guys were instantly put in if you guys hit the subscribe button. Have a great week, everyone. And Barb says she will answer any questions you want to so put them in the comments below if she hasn't answered them already on the show. See you all on Wednesday. Until then, we'll see you on the ships.